Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel, Crafting with Cami. Today we're creating a double page scrapbook layout. And in true Cami fashion, we have a ton of pictures to document today. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so, my little nephew got dedicated at, um, at church. And so, we had a celebration and I have a million pictures. I wanted to be able to document all of my grandparents with him and my parents and of course my sister. So I wanted to print a ton of pictures and then I had a ton of him with his little cross balloons there. Isn't he adorable? So we're going to be fitting all of these pictures on a double page layout. Wish me luck. I am doing some stash busting today. So I pulled out Close to My Heart's Honey Bunny collection. I really liked this butterfly paper along with this plaid. I love the pastel. It reminds me of Baby. And I realize there's pink in there and he's a little boy and there's not much pink going on in the pictures. But by bringing in more of that blue, yellow, greens will dull back that pink. and. It just looks like a cute little baby paper. So I'm going to use the pinks and pastels while he still lets me. <laughs> and then I also have some of this yellow polka dot paper with the pink on the back. But like I said, we're going to bring in more of the pastels. So that's from that same collection. I was kind of playing around with this off camera. And I was thinking something along these lines. Let me get these straight with the world here. I have another sheet of that that I thought could go here. And then the, which direction did this go? The yellow I wanted to put down at the bottom. And this one I did cut wrong, so I need to piece it together. But hopefully, once I get everything adhered and get my photos on and everything, you won't see that crease. This zip strip is was just in my stash. It was from another collection of Close to My Hearts. I'm not... I think it might have been the Mixins, actually. So, I was thinking those could go there. I do want to cut out the center of this um, butterfly paper because I do love it. I, it has more of this on the back of it. So I do want to cut that center out so I can use that for another layout. And I'll do the same with this one. This one will have a large piece that I could use on another layout. I did cut these down so that they weren't under these. My dog's coming in and laying down. You can probably hear her little pitter patters. So I have my cutter here. And I'm just going to make sure my measurements are correct. Um, I, I was eyeballing it. I was pulling scraps out of my, um, paper pack and whatnot. So I wasn't really paying attention to measurements at this point, but I just want to make sure. So this is an inch from the top and an inch from the bottom. And then we'll kind of make sure this is centered. That is under an inch and under an inch. So if I cut this about an inch and a quarter and this an inch, then I should be able to tuck everything under. And I might just do inch and a quarter for easy math for me. So let's do that. Then I don't have to try to remember what's what. So if this is going this way, I can cut all the way to the end here and then go in an inch and a quarter this needs to spin around <laughs> okay so we're going up an inch and a quarter over an inch and a quarter getting my head over here and then we can go all the way through the edge of the paper okay so again going up that inch and a fourth starting an inch and a fourth rotating again lining it up with that inch and a fourth here I can go off the paper this time and there we go so I have 
you know, this whole strip I can use on another layout or later on in this layout if I need more paper. Okay, so this one's going this direction so I can cut off the edge of this way. So we'll go up an inch and a quarter there. I like to save every little piece of paper I can. <laughs> that already looks really cool. Wouldn't that be fun to do like another square? I don't know, maybe I'm crazy. Okay, I do want to do some inking, and I don't want to bring in black. I don't want harsh, um, that harsh black with all these pastels and light colors. So I'm going to bring in my charcoal, and this is just one of the mini blocks from Close to My Heart. And I'm just kind of rubbing it kind of over the paper, like... I'm not going straight across. I want a little darker. So I am kind of angling my block a little bit, but I don't want it to be too shaded. So there's at points I got on the surface of the paper, but not regularly, not all the way across or anything like that. And I think that just makes it pop that much more. I like that. So we'll go ahead and do this one too. And I don't need to do the inside since we're overlapping. And I'm not going to do the sides. One, because they're touching. And then over here, I'm not going to do the sides either because they're going off the page. I'm actually not going to do the yellow at all. But I will do those zip strips. I will ink around those so that um, those are a little more defined. Here I got a little crazy, but that's all right. I'll probably do it again. On these longer pieces, you kind of tend to slip more. There, I did it again. So there's a few pieces that are going to look a little more rustic and worn, but that's all right. He's a little boy. We got to grunge it up a little bit, right? <laughs> okay. And then we'll just run this across. And I actually know that my sister watches my channel with my nephew so hi Declan <laughs> she said he gets really excited they she says you ready to watch Aunt Cammy and he gets really smiley and excited I still need to cut this paper down, but I don't want ink there anyway, so that's all right. So this is four inches. This one's the eight inches, and we want about an inch on each side. So let's cut this one down to the three inches. I have all of this tacked down. This, I want to be my kind of focal photo. This is his invitation. Um, I have a sticky note over the top of it since it has the address and everything on there. So this is just saying, hey, this is his dedication. So this will kind of be my title then. I don't really need a big title since this says dedication of Declan. So that'll be my focal. And then the other one that I want to be my focal photo is us with him, my husband and I, because my scrapbook <laughs> so I really have no no idea what I'm doing with the pictures the sizes that I printed and I did do a video on how I print these different sizes but I did three by fours for almost all of them so I have some horizontal some vertical and then the ones that weren't you know great pictures him and his cousin playing together um, my uncle playing with him, just like more of these shots that weren't the best ones. Um, I knew I wanted small. So then I thought, well, if I'm doing super small, let's print it with a four by four. So when my printer prints it, I use the Canon selfie. It prints like this. It prints it on a four by six. 
and it prints one four by four and then two two by twos which my printer doesn't print exact so if you actually measure it it's not exactly four by four or two by two it's about a quarter inch shy but that's what made me de decide to do some four by fours plus it just looks nice on your layout if you have multiple size pictures in my opinion if they're all four by six it's just very structured so having the play of different sizes is nice you're probably thinking how the heck are you going to fit all these pictures on your layout good question i'm not sure <laughs> I do have flip flaps. I have four by four and three by four flip flaps in my stash. So I will, I will be bringing in flip flaps. My sister's dress kind of matches <laughs> this paper, but there's a lot of blue. So they had the, the screen up for him, which was bright blue. We have blue in the, um, invitation here which is the wrong blue it matches her dress but it doesn't match my paper maybe i should have tried to match that but too late now i liked this paper we're using it so anyways and then um yeah i have some vertical some horizontal so what i'm thinking so let's just kind of sort these here so these are all four by fours these are all three by fours. These are my two by twos. Okay. So we have three horizontal ones. We could do a flip flap with those. So maybe do immediate grandparents on top and then have the great grandparents and great great aunt <laughs> um, underneath. Yes, that is my great aunt. So that is Declan's great great aunt. <laughs> Um, these ones, so I have my other grandma, my uncle, we could do, and then we have those three. So we could do another flip flap here. We could do the family ones together and then these ones together. And really, I'm not a huge fan of this picture of myself. And, um, since we're hiding the other great grandparents, let's hide that one. We don't want to pick favorites. And then let's put dad on top. So that one will go like that. Okay, here we have four. So I can only pick three. So when you do a flip flap, one goes down on the page and then two go in the flip flap. So three per flip flap is what I like to think. Since these three are similar, let's put those three in a flip flap. And then this one is of the family actually dedicating so that one will be on its own. Now look, we already have a ton of open space just by using flip flaps. This is going to be flip flap heavy. We're going to have one, two, three, four flip flaps. But look at how much more room we have. We could try to do kind of a grid style. So if we wanted to maybe go like this, that wouldn't look bad. We could do something like that. Um, we could even bring, you know, one flip flap over here and do something like that. That would kind of spread it out more. Um, this one, he's kind of facing that direction. We could try to go maybe... like that and have him more centered and then we could do so we wouldn't necessarily have to use a four by four flip flap but they're kind of repetitive have you guys ever tried to take a picture of a baby i was actually taking these pictures and at one point i got this face so Aunt Cammie was down on the ground trying to get pictures of him, and I think he got mad at me. <laughs> How cute is that? It was like, a, I'm coming after you, woman. You're done. So I took that as my cue, but we still have all of those, too. So let's use that flip flap and stack those together. Okay, and then 
I do have all these two by twos, so we could line them up. Even though he was getting mad at me, I, I still found that adorable, so we're gonna put that in the scrapbook. We could do something like this and line them all up. Maybe go zigzag since we have more. We can fit all but one by doing that. I'm not set on how this is coming together. So we could move We could do something like this. Bring the family over to this side. For some reason, I usually put like the main photos on my left with my title, and then my right is usually supporting photos. That's, that's what goes on in my head. I don't know why I choose to do that. I think I'm getting closer to liking this so what I decided to do, I, I was thinking of putting this one over here. I didn't like, I don't want to smush them together. For one, they both have a flip flap, but I don't want it to look too crowded. But I also didn't want this photo to hang over this frame. It just, it just didn't look right. And I'm not liking how this one is hanging over the frame either. I want it to look like a frame. So I took out one of the pictures that looks similar to this smaller one. Now I can put this one underneath. I realized that was like the whole point was the dedication, but with just so much blue in the picture, I decided let's put that one underneath, have him on top next to his cross balloons, and maybe we can do something like that. So then it's, you know, his invite, here he is. I have a little open spot here, but we can, we can get there. Okay, so then over here I have an open spot. So we could go like this and do the two flip flaps there, have that one there, and then we just need to find a home for this one. What I decided was to kind of do a little grid here, and I don't have another picture to put in this spot, so I might embellish that. But I do want to have like a frame here going around those pictures make them pop a little more over here i found that bringing my pictures closer together and not having them you know like this really i don't know brought your eye into the photos so i lined these two up and then tucked this one in so i like having that sage border here and i have the white printed this one printed on with the white border which I think stands out on that yellow. So that looks nice. Over here, I want to accent this one. I want to frame that one. So I'm going to bring the sage over here as well. And then this one and this one, they kind of get lost in the background. So I'm wondering if I want sage or if I want like a pink would be nice. But again, I don't want to bring too much pink in. So then I'm wondering if this would be too dark. Actually, I've been saying the wrong colors all along. This is Seabrook. This one is Seabrook. This is Sage. So Sage might be too dark, but it might also bring in just enough. Okay, this is what I have adhered, and then these will go like this. I even gutted out the center of this little frame and I'm going to add some embellishments to that. I have some stickers from the sticker sheet. This one says Easter blessings and I thought I could cut off Easter and then maybe just have blessings coming out from somewhere. I have a few other banners which I had originally thought maybe up here but now that I have that picture we might need to find a different home for those. I have banner elements. So I was thinking going across here with my banner, but again, now that I have a picture there, I'm not so sure that that's a good idea. 
And then I also have this one that says so sweet, which obviously goes with the theme. So let's cut this off right away. I think I want to use the blessings for sure. So to make sure my cut is straight, I'm just going to bring this in. I cut down blessings or cut off Easter. And then I went around the edges with that charcoal. doesn't look too bad. I like this banner, but I don't know where I want it to go. Okay, that's kind of nice having it go across this part of the page. And just overlap that little corner there. Okay, Blessings is looking a little crowded now. Look how this looks. Let's adhere that. So I added one of these sprigs to each section where I want a cluster. I did adhere those three smaller florals to the center of that little grid with the small pictures. Uh, those I made on my Cricut, and I just had those in my stash. I had made those for another project, and they fit well and matched the colors. I brought out Sundance and Sage ink, and I have a couple options for florals. I pulled out the Love Story, and I pulled out the Isabella. I'm thinking the Love Story, and those do come with the coordinating thin cuts. These are close to my heart, so let's do some of this size, some of this size. Let's just do a handful of them. So what I am thinking Let's practice with one first. So I have a Sundance brush here and I am thinking just lightly shading it in. I think I like that and I'm focusing more on the center than spreading it out so then we could do the same with this little guy do a couple of him because they fit gotta leave a little room in between for the um, thin cut and then just right in the center I like that. I think that'll look nice on this layout. It brings out a little more orange. Um, so this is Honey Butter, this is Sundance, but I think it'll look good. Okay, let's do some larger ones. Okay. All right, that's good for the Sundance. Let's do a couple in sage. I have my sage brush now. I got all of these stamped. Actually, I'm gonna put that down just to protect my pictures a little bit. I'll go ahead and run all of these through my die cut machine. Cut a whole bunch of these thin cuts here. So I'm just scattering these florals in each of the clusters where I already put the sprigs. So I want to have a couple of the sage and then mix in those yellow ones as well. And it would have been nice to have a third color, but I didn't want to bring in too much more pink and I wasn't sure what other color to bring in. But I do like how just the simple tones um, played in and then the solid sage cardstock for the sprigs 
tied in nicely. I am popping some of the florals up on 3D foam tape. This one I did like the four florals, but typically I like to do my clusters in sets of odd numbers, so I actually switched to just three florals down here. And I'm popping this one up on 3D foam tape. You'll also see me using my Barely Art Precision Tip glue. I really like that as well for the smaller florals and those sprigs. This cluster will tuck behind my flip flap. I have these little gems, they're like faceted, from Stampin' Up. I'm going to include those on this layout. I'm just kind of going in that triangular formation and varying the sizes in all of the clusters. I'll go ahead and get these in the page protectors and show you how I'm going to add the flip flaps. I wanted to bring this up closer before I got it in the page protector and it had a reflection to it. So our embellishments are super simple, but we used a ton of pattern papers. Look at that little cluster and look at that little man. So cute. Okay, let's go ahead and get these in the page protectors and add our flip flaps. All right, I am just going to do a couple on screen for you here. So I have this in my page protector and I'm making sure that it's all the way down in the page protector. I'm grabbing my photos. So I wanted the horizontal ones over this one. And we are going to have this flip upward. So this one needs to be technically upside down. So I actually adhered my photos together so that if they move around in the page protector at all, they move together. We'll go ahead and slide that in and make sure it's centered in between those margins. And then this part folds over and that's what's going to tack down. So I'll peel the back off of that and then line up the photo with the photo. Okay, so I lined up up here. And it's very sticky, so you wanna make sure it's in the right spot before you finish pushing down. And then I like to burnish the inside real good with either a bone folder or this little scraper from Cricut. And there we go. You can also put them on the page um, you can also put them directly onto your page. I do that a lot too. And then I cut the page protector. This one I adhered upside down. It's going to flip upward. Okay, so I have these adhered together. This one I want on top, so I'm going to slide it in this direction. So this flap, if you can see, opens this way. Make sure that's centered, and then it closes this way. Does that make sense? So then it's gonna flip like that. We're gonna make sure this is all the way in again. Take off the backing of this. Line up the photo with the photo. Make sure it's lined up before we push down, and then burnish it real good. This one, I am actually going to have it open this direction so that it's contained within my 12 by 12 so that it's not flipping up out of my book. So this one, I can put them back to back like this. And then we want this one on front, so we'll go like this. Peel off that backing, fold that over, line up our picture, make sure it's perfect before we push down, and then burnish that again. All right, we'll bring in that second one here. I hope this brought you inspiration. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel if you're not already a part of this community. And until next time, live a life worth scrapping. Bye, guys.